Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I very much appreciate the opportunity that we are making this uh, conference here in Milano, in Italy, which is a very important market for Metinvest. And, uh, of course, the opportunity to give a speech and presentation today. So today I want to highlight two issues. The first one is the relationship between steel industries of Ukraine and Europe and the role of Ukrainian steel and mining industry in European market. And the second one, the business model that Metinvest is having in this very challenging and demanding market and especially in regards with relationship in Europe. And we did not have a primary pre-agreement with McKinsey, but uh, uh, my first slide shows approximately the same figures, but with a slightly different message. Uh, this is the, how the steel demand developed over 15 years in the world. And the message is that, in fact, in 15 years, there was almost 85% growth in the steel demand. So the steel demand almost doubled during that period. And whatever people are saying regarding steel industry, that it is very conservative and very slow movement, we can see that there are opportunities and there are opportunities for everybody to find their spots. Of course, we understand that um, this demand was driven mainly by Asian part of the world. Uh, but still we understand that there is a lot of places in the world where steel is not yet consumed at the level what it is consumed by the developed countries. And even though, for example, as we talk about India, yes, now India represents very slow part in steel production and consumption. But if you will consider the figures of steel consumption per capita, for example, the potential of steel growth is huge. And there is a lot of places and spots in the world like that, that still have a very high potential for the steel growth. At the same time, we see that, talking about Europe, uh, during these 15 years, Europe did not participate in this huge uh, growth of the demand in the world. In fact, it was a slight decrease of the consumption of steel, 3% the decrease of the consumption. If we look at the, um, at the share of imports and uh, if the level of imports and the share of Ukrainian steel in the interests of the European Union, we see the following tendencies. Uh, the imports since 2009 to European Union doubled. At the same time, the share of Ukrainian imports to European uh, Union decreased 50% from 2011. So basically, through all the period of 15 years which I'm looking at, the amount, the physical amount of steel uh, supplied from Ukraine to European Union remained almost the same. So, and because there was no significant increase or decrease of the supply of steel demand in Europe, we can say that the amount of steel delivered to Ukraine and delivered from Ukraine to Europe and the share of Ukrainian, Ukrainian mills in the consumption of Europe remained stable over a very long period of time. At the same time, during the, uh, during that period, uh, from the peak in the consumption, from the peaking of the production of steel in uh, uh, Ukra uh, in Ukraine, which uh, happened in 2000, uh, 2007, the production of steel in Ukraine decreased almost 40 percent. So back uh, from almost 40 million ton back to 2007, we are now up to or down to uh, almost 24 million ton. It's a kind of the reply and it's a kind of the measure to the global overcapacity we are facing in the world, so there is already a decrease of the production of steel in Ukraine that is, uh, that is happening consequently. As I said, the steel export from Ukraine to Europe 
if from 2006 to 2018 dropped 31 percent and over last uh, five years it uh, dropped roughly one million uh, it dropped roughly one million ton at the same time the amount of iron ore delivered of different iron ore product concentrated pellets delivered from Ukraine to European market increased almost 50 percent and Ukraine now is in top three uh, iron ore suppliers to European market. Uh, in all this challenging environment and all this uh, fluctuation and very I would say demanding Demand, uh, demand, uh, demanding world. What business model um, choose MetInvest uh, for, 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 for ourselves uh, in order to be a consequent and be continuous supplier of the steel products in European market? You know, we know that in challenging market situation, every company is trying to find the winning business model that would help to capitalize on the strengths and minimize the impact of, of the weaknesses. And MetInvest, being a vertically integrated company that benefit from its geographical location, which is, provides uh, proper access both to the raw materials market and both to the uh, international sea routes and international trade routes, uh, trade routes to the key consuming market, uh, at the same time is facing a severe, different, uh, severe difficulties in uh, uh, decrease of the consumption of steel in the domestic market and the severe difficulties in attracting a capital. So we are the country where the cost of capital is one of the highest in European continent, in fact. So we were uh, trying to work out for ourselves a business model that would allow us to be a consequent player and to diversify between, uh, between different markets and have a focus on our key consuming markets. So MetInvest now is a low-cost producer with a global reach. We are producing 40 million ton of uh, iron ore products, both concentrate and pellets. We are producing 1.5 million tons of steel and over 1,000 different names of the steel product in four production sites in Europe and in Ukraine. We are currently more than 250% self-sufficient in iron ore, uh, more than 150% self-sufficient in, in coke, and more than 40% self-sufficient in uh, coal. But with recent uh, acquisition of 25% of the Pokrovskaya mine shares and having a long-term contract for the coal supply, we are becoming now, in fact, 80% sufficient in, uh, in coal suppliers, which makes us fully vertically integrating steel, uh, steel, uh, steel companies. Uh, being, being that, we are trying to diversify our sales over more than, 100, more than 100 countries, having 42 sales offices worldwide and 35 seven centers and serving more than 10,000 customers. We are, by the, by the way, we are having almost 800 of vessels operating all year round, shipping our material in the different parts of the world. Regarding our business model in Europe, we choose for us being both Ukrainian producer and European producers following the needs of our customers and applying re-rolling business model, but also being a continuous with not very big ups and downs and consequent exporter of both semi-finished and finished products to European market. We are operating four re-rolling units in Europe, two of them located in Italy, one in UK and one in Bulgaria, producing almost two million tons of finished steel products with uh, almost four billion, do billion dollars of revenues and employing more than 1,000 people in European Union. 
At the same time, we are finishing 1.8 million tons of different finished steel product to Europe and 1.6 uh, <coughs> million tons of semi-finished product and pig iron. For the future, we are planning to be, not to focus on the increasing volume, but to focus on increasing efficiency and increasing downstream operations. The key initiatives are lie in terms of improving commercial excellence, de uh, developing CRM project, developing our organization uh, by, by customer, by um, industry-based principles, and development of technical support. <coughs> Market and channels development, uh, constructing a service centers in uh, main consuming market in Europe. Product quality development, investing in uh, new finished product, especially in the coils part, but also in semi-finished products in Ukraine. And we are also looking at the possibility of the organic growth and expanding production and operation of our European rerolling units, but at the same time looking at the opportunities that might arise in the uh, in the in the M and A field uh, and possibility to acquire new assets in European Union that would fit the business model we are working on. And uh, to finish up this presentation, I must say that Ukrainian market itself presents a very high potential for the steel consumption growth. Now the steel consumption is very low in Ukraine, both in total tonnages, but also in the consumption per capita. Now Ukraine consumes less than 90 kilos per uh, uh, now, no, less than 90 kilos per capita, which is quite low if you compare it, for example, even with China, that is consuming over 450 kilos per capita, and with uh, neighboring markets like Europe and like Russia, the potential of growth is very, is very big. And we understand that uh, the, the countries, uh, uh, if, if we will follow the route, for example, of Poland, the increase of the of the, the possible increase of the consumption due to the development of different infrastructure product and also renewing of the off infrastructure product is there. So basically, we think that uh, in the future, Ukrainian market would be very attractive also for us, but also for the international players. Thank you.